What's going on everybody? For this keyboard lighting design, I went to the polls and allowed you guys to vote for what the next keyboard lighting design was going to be. And it was a very, very tight race. Over the last few days, I've been checking on the votes on this poll. At about 100 votes, Twitch was winning at a margin of 32% to about 27%. But as of late, the moving Pac-Man design made a surge and a really strong comeback to take over the vote. So by popular demand, this video is going to be about the moving Pac-Man design. As always, there will be a download link in the description below, so make sure you go and check that out. If you guys are keyboard lighting enthusiasts and you wanna see how I made this possible, then you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned and watch this video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. That way you guys see upcoming keyboard lighting videos. All right guys, let's get into it. All right guys, so when you download this design and you get it imported, there's a couple of things you're gonna need to know. So over here on the left, you can see all the effects that are applied to this keyboard lighting design. In this folder here under peripheral colors, if you click on that, this is going to allow you to see whatever color you want for your peripheral razor devices. So if I wanted green, I would just hide the red and I would unhide the green. Now you can see it's all green. Likewise for any other color here, light blue, uh, orange, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now that we have peripherals covered, I'm just going to drop, hide that folder there. You're also going to see several folders here that have the colored ghost. So whatever color you want set up as your ghost, you can go ahead and do the same thing. Just unhide whatever color it is you want and rehide the other colors. All right, guys. So for this design, I'm going to show you what I started with first. First, I wanted to work on the Pac-Man and see if I could even get an animated Pac-Man opening and closing his mouth going across the keyboard, which was really quite difficult and it took me quite a bit of time. And this is how I did it. So I began trying to create this lighting by making the movement of the mouth. And I'm actually gonna hide this Pac-Man design here. And you can see here with the mouth, I just have two waves. So I have a wave that's going up and a wave that's going down and it's kind of creating that animation of opening and closing. Real quick on screen, I'm gonna show you what the properties are for these two waves. For the first one here, you can see in the color gradient, I have the majority or about one third of the bar is yellow and the majority of it is invisible. My speed was set at 50. I had my width percentage set to 200. And that's all I had to do for the first one. Second wave, very similar, except it was on the left side. So if you look at the color gradient, you can see one third of the bar was filled with yellow and the majority of it was filled with invisible. Same properties, just about, yeah, your speed set at 50 with 200%. And on this wave, I had my angle at 180. With the first wave, my angle was at zero. So once I got this movement going, all I did was create waves that basically had a, a Pac-Man shape with an open mouth. So you can see here in my Pac-Man design, each kind of row is its own uh, wave. So you can see how the gradient slowly changes as it goes up. So you can see in this Pac-Man gradient, I have the majority of it's black. A small portion is for the Pac-Man, the yellow, and then I have invisible. So it's allowing you to see through this wave to the background, which allows you to see the movement of the mouth. So as you can see here, when I make them both visible, you have a Pac-Man shape that is opening and closing. Next, I decided to make a ghost that would be chasing him. And what I did for that is very simple. I just made a wave design that was shaped in the outline of a ghost as much as I could, uh, chasing after him. And I threw some white in there to represent some eyeballs for the ghost. So if we look at the property details on the Pac-Man, you can see this is basically my timeline. If you don't know what I mean by timeline, I just released a video uh, called the pokeball on how to animate your keyboard lighting if you go check out that video you'll understand what I mean by timeline on this timeline you can see right here there is where my pac-man is and if you go to the ghost you can see I use the same exact properties as far as speed width and angle goes 
And further down my timeline here, you can see I have some red, which is my ghost that's following my Pac-Man. So once I got these two figures on my keyboard, kind of rolling across it, I decided to put in some dots, just like in the video game. Pac-Man needs some dots, right? So I decided to throw those in. And all I did for the dots was once again use my timeline strategy. So you can see with these white spaces, I again have the same exact properties that I have for my ghost and my Pac-Man. That way they're all in sync with timing. So with 200, speed four. And what I did was just play around with these nodes and I got it to where the white dot would go invisible as soon as Pac-Man as soon as Pac-Man's mouth came down to close on it. So you can see this is different from all the other dots. In this gradient, I'm slowly transitioning and moving them, and they're shutting off basically as soon as Pac-Man's mouth goes to close on it. With this design, I've also added a feature to where Pac-Man can also chase the ghost when you press a button. To create this, all I did was duplicate all of these layers here. I duplicated the mouth, the Pac-Man, and the ghost properties. All I did was duplicate those and paste them in here. I made the ghost blue because in the video game when Pac-Man starts chasing, the ghost turned blue. All of these designs, all I did to the properties was change the angle and change the color. You don't need to do anything more than that and it will reverse the order of it. Also, with every single one of these waves that are set up in here, I set it to start on press and end on press. That way, whenever I press a key, this effect goes into play, and I press a key again, and the chase is off. This part of the effect is kind of just for fun, because if you continue to press the key, it just switches back and forth, and it's not that appealing. So it's really only for fun. You can disable it but just by clicking this hide button. But that's going to do it for this design. If you have any questions about how I made it, please feel free to ask in the comments below. Here's a short clip to show you guys what it looks like on your keyboard. Thank you guys so much for watching this video please if you liked the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button if you haven't that way you guys don't miss out on all the upcoming keyboard lighting videos don't forget to go and follow me on my social media accounts that way you guys see upcoming content thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one